Okay, so we're going to talk about um, converting decimals to fractions and fractions to decimals and percentages to decimals and percentages to fractions and things like that. This is a skill that you need to know, not just for class, but for life. You need to know how to handle percentages, decimals, and fractions. Okay, so let's do, this is lesson 43. Okay, we're going to convert percentages, decimals, and fractions. Okay, so first of all, I think the easiest one is writing, uh, is converting a decimal to a fraction. Actually, there's easier ones, going from decimal to percent or percent to decimal. All you're doing is moving the decimal two places. But how do you say that? How do you say this number? Grady? As a fraction? How do you say that number? As a decimal? Yeah, just, just say, that, say that number. Um, 125 thousandths. 125 Thousands. Did you say a hundred and? Yeah, Don't be I embarrassed. Added an That's okay. You got me four boxes hey, of Reese's Pieces. At least I didn't add like a hundred and twenty-five and and uh, and fifty thousand. Yeah. Okay. So remember, you just say the say the digits, say the number, and then say the ending place value. It ends in the third decimal place over, which is the thousandths. Okay. So are you just gonna move on, walk away? You're done. No, you could tell by the way I looked at you, right? Are you really going to do that? Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be a moron and do that? That's, that was my look. Okay, well, this is technically the right answer, but whenever you can, you need to reduce. So actually, if you just start dividing things by like five, you might get there, but actually 125 goes into 1,000 eight times. So if I divide everything by 125, you get one eight. So this is one eighth, 0.125 or 125 thousandths is one eighth. Okay. Which kind of makes sense. What's 0.25? What's 0.25? Yeah. Yeah. Which is what fraction? What's 0.25? What, is, what fraction is 0.25? Me? Yeah. 25 over 100. Okay, but what, reduce that. What is that? What is that in money? 0.25? Uh, fourth. fourth. It's just one fourth. So one eighth is half of a fourth, right? So 0.125 is half of 0.25. Right, because 12 and a half is half of 25, so 0.125 is a half of 0.25. Okay, so let's try something a little bit more difficult. Let's try writing this as a fraction. Or really, this would be a mixed number. How do you write that as a mixed number? Well, how do you say this number? You can always start there. How do you say this number? 11 and 42 hundredths. Okay, can you reduce 42 hundredths? Yeah, they're both even numbers. Cut them both in half, and what do you get? Nice, 21 fiftieths. So when you say and, the mixed number, that's just writing the fraction right next to the whole number. That's what and means, okay? So far, so good. So this number doesn't change at all. The number to the left of the decimal, that's nice. You just rewrite that, and you just have to write that over the ending place value and reduce it if you have to, okay? All right, next. Let's write this as a decimal. Write a fraction as a decimal. You probably already know this. 
because we just talked about it. But how do you write one fourth as a decimal? You guys know without even doing the math what it is, Avery? Um, point two five. That's right. Okay, but how do you do it if you don't have it memorized? What do you do? How do you figure out what a fraction is as a decimal? You guys, know? You remember? We talked about it briefly. What does this symbol mean? What does that line mean? Divide. divide. So that just means division. Okay? So one divided by four. Does four go into one? Nope. So what do you do? Add a decimal and a zero or two. How many times does four go into ten? Two times. Two times four is eight. Subtract. There's no more numbers to bring down, but since it's a decimal, you can add as many zeros as you want, right? Bring down another zero. How many times does four go into 20? Five times. Look what we got. 0.25. Okay. But you already knew that one fourth, one quarter, right? One fourth is the same thing as one quarter. Quarter is 25 cents. Okay. All right. Try this. Let's write. Um, let's see here. One third. You guys know what one third is as a, as a decimal? Hunter? Zero point and then infinite threes. All right. So do you remember we talked about that last week? How do you write infinite threes? Put a line over three. Right. So point three. You can put a zero there if you want. Uh, you don't need the zero there, but it looks it's easier to read if there's a zero there. Sometimes that dot is a little too small, but if there's a zero there, then you would know there's a dot there. Okay, well, let's do that the same way. Does three go into one? No, nope, but goes in three times. Bring down another zero. See what's happening? Point three repeating, okay? Does this feel okay so far? All right. Um, so your homework is going to be something that looks kind of like, uh, well, we'll see, do that in a second. The last conversion we're going to do is writing percentages as a decimal. Well, that was bad. Decimal. Okay. How do you write 75% as a decimal? Anyone know? Hunter? 75 over 100. Okay, you just wrote it as a fraction. Awesome. 75 hundredths, because that's what a, per a percentage is, is out of 100, right? Do you know, Grady? Uh, 0.75. 0 0.75. All you're doing is moving the decimal over, okay? But if you think about it, this is 75 hundredths. What do you do to a number when you divide by 100? You just move the decimal over two places. So this becomes 0.75. This is the easiest thing in the world. With all three of these conversions, converting a percentage to a decimal, or really a decimal back to a percent, is just moving the dot two places. It's always two, no more, no less. So this would be 0.75. So let's go the other way. So let's write um, 0.37 as a percent. How do you write 0.37 as a percent? Kiara? 37%? 37%. You're just moving the decimal over two places. Boom. So 37%. Okay. If you're going to be tricked by these, it's going to be like here. How do you say 5% as a decimal? Marin? It's, um, it's, oh wait, sorry, 0.05. Right, so you need another zero there. Cause look, you can only, you have to go two places. But I ran out of places, so you need to add another zero. So 0 0.05, good. So single digit percents have a zero in front of it. So 9% is 0 0.09. 
Okay, elephant percent is 0 0.011 elephant. I don't think that works. Well, I don't think of elephants as single digits. They're a little double wide, I guess. Okay. It depends on how many pounds they weigh. Yeah. If they weigh too many, you can do it in pounds. What did I hear? Like, like baby elephants are like already like even baby elephants are like way heavy like a ton or something crazy like a ton like a lot or like a little literal ton. like maybe two thousand pounds i don't know maybe i'm wrong but maybe elephants are are really heavy too even though they're cute little babies i heard that i heard that like large elephants are scared of small animals like mice yeah yeah that's the rumor Okay, what about this? One more tricky one. Let's see if you guys can figure this out. What's 150% as a decimal? Avery? Um, one and, wait, 1.5. Yep, or just 1.5, great, right? because you can drop that zero. Good job, so 1.50, but you can drop the zero if it's a zero on the end of a decimal. So see how we're just moving the decimal two places. That's it. Either left or right, depending on which way you're going. So your homework is going to look like this. You're going to get like a little chart here. And then the top one's going to be a fraction, decimal, percent. And then you're going to have like convert that to a decimal and a percent. And then you're gonna have something like this. And so you have to fill in the blanks. Should we do that real quick? We can do this quickly, right? Good. Yeah, are you on a gym call? Yep. I wonder if any of people online now. Oh, yeah. Adeline, do you wanna answer this? Hello? Oh, she's there. Hey. You're muted, but do you know how to answer this? No. <laughs> Look at that. Look at it. So how do you write 5100 as a decimal? Uh, <laughs> Or you can do one of these too. Oh, I can. I need those last two A. Wait. Get those last two A. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. That's all right. I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, remember. Oh. Converting a decimal to a percent, what do you do? Decimal to a percent, so it would, would it be 30%? Yes, it is. So you have to move it two places to the right. So we run out of digits there, so we add another zero, so 30%. So 30% is like 30 per hundredth. So how do you reduce? 30 over 100? Mm -hmm. Thinking. Just 3 over 10, right? Yeah. Right. You guys the top one. Top right. one. That's right. This is already in percent form, isn't it? 51 per hundredth. So 51%. And how do you change 51% to a decimal? Move the decimal over two places. So 0. 0.51. Boom. That makes sense, you guys? All right, your homework will look kind of like that. Uh, don't forget, do your practice test by tonight before midnight, and you get 10 points extra credit, 10 points. Uh, we're just going to divide, and we're going to write remainders. After in our division problem, we're going to re write remainders as fractions and as decimals. So when you say remainder three or something like that, that's not really useful in life. Um, sometimes it is. 
like um, but most of the time when you want to give somebody an exact answer you would say um, you would write your remainder as a fraction or a decimal yes uh-huh okay so for example does four go into 27 <laughs> Yes. Well, technically it goes in, it just doesn't go in evenly, right? So four goes into 28, <laughs> you look like a little elf. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, though. <laughs> okay, so how many times does four go into 27 without going over? Hunter? A little more than five, so six. Times four is 24, subtract, you get three. So now you could say remainder three, but again, like you don't really want to, depends on what you're dividing by, right? So if you're like dividing by 100 and you get remainder three, remainder three means that was like 97 that went in evenly, but so you don't really want to write as a, as a remainder. So what you can do is just keep dividing. Okay, so what happens when you divide three by four? So you can divide your remainder by four too. So that's just three divided by four. So six and three fourths, okay? So for example, if you had a string, 27 inches, and you wanted to separate it into four parts, if you want to, four even parts, well, you could do, <laughs> so here you're dividing it by four parts and you get six, 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 and then you have that three. Well, what you want to do here is you want these three remainder to each, so all of those sixes would get a little bit more too, okay? So three divided by four as well. It's kind of a weird way to explain it, but basically the steps are divide normally. Wait, can I correct you? That's not supposed to be, that's supposed to be four. No, because it's six plus six plus six plus six is 24. And then, and then you, that, you have four. three left, right? Because this all equals 27. And then what I'm doing is I'm getting, giving everyone a fourth of this three. So three fourths. So each one gets three fourths as well. Oh, in my brain, I thought six times four was 26. That's all right. It's because you're in elf mode right now. No offense. Okay, so basically the steps are whatever you get for a remainder, throw it over your divisor and you're done. Okay? Did you get that, Dylan? All right. So what the other way to write your remainder is just keep going with the decimal and see what happens. Well, do you guys know what three fourths is as a decimal? Point, 0.75, three quarters, three fourths is 0.75. Well, let's do that this way. So 20, you can also say 27 divided by six is four, blah, blah. And then add a decimal and a zero. Oh, not a zero there. Bring down that zero. How many times does six go into 30? Wait, what's happening here? I'm stealing Hunter's math break. I thought he said I'm smarter. 27 divided by 4, 24, 3. <laughs> what, what did I do? <laughs> Oh, I'm dividing by the wrong thing here. Yeah. Sorry. That's why I said the correct number. Oh. So six, yeah, 21, blah, blah. How many times is four going to 30? It goes in seven times with two left over. Bring down another zero. Keep bringing down zeros until you're done. Okay? Four goes into 25 times. If it does repeat, what do you do with the answer? Put a line over the repeating part, right? Good.
Okay, um, should we do another one? Okay, can you de elf? <laughs> okay, I want you to write. Uh, I want you to write the answer in three different ways. You ready? Okay, 54 divided by four, go. Yep. Write your answer in three different ways. Yeah. Yeah, what did you get? Oh, you got rid of some. Two different decimal ones? No. So this is right. This is not quite right. Does it have to be a decimal? Uh, I want a decimal answer, I want a fractional answer, and I want just a remainder. All right, what'd you get? All right. Well, the remainder would be two. Oh, wait, so I, I, I think you can see this. I think I know it. All right, why don't you tell me what you got? All right, so for the fraction, 13 and a half. Okay. 13, and then for the remainder, just 13 the remainder of two. Uh huh. And then for the decimal, 13 plus five. Okay. What am I doing? I won't do the exact same stuff without eight. All right, That's good job. Sure. Yeah. 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 All right, so everyone should get to this point where you have a remainder. Now, at this point, you have three different directions you can go. You can just give me the remainder. You can say remainder two, or you can say 13 and two fourths, but that reduces to what? One half. One half. Or you can keep going. So four into 54, I'm going to add a decimal and a zero. So that goes in. Four goes into 20 exactly five times, so 13.5, good. So those are your three different answers you can write, okay? All right, now, um, sometimes remainders just don't even matter. For example, if we all went on a field trip, the whole school, and there were two buses. Those are big buses. Two buses, two buses that carried um, 38 students each, okay? And let's say there are 100 students. How many buses do we need to take? What kind of math is that, first of all? If there's 38 can fit on a bus and there's 100 students, what kind of math do you do? Yeah, Hunter? Division, so 100 divided by 38. How many times does 38 go into 100? Well, it goes in, let's see, it goes in three times maybe, that's too much. So two would give you 76 with the remainder of 24. So how many buses do we need to take? We need to take three, it doesn't matter if you have a remainder of one which would be so sad, wouldn't it? <laughs> that you have to rent the whole box for that one person. Yeah. 
if there aren't extra buses, you can just tie them all to the top. Yeah, you could squeeze in, but that we'd be arrested. <laughs> Okay, so does that make sense? Where now, to, now the remainder, the exact remainder, I don't. You don't have to write it as a fraction or as a decimal. If you have any kind of remainder, you need another bus, right? So this time, the remainder is important to know that there is a remainder, but it's not important to know what the remainder is. It's just the fact that there is a remainder means I have to take another bus. Okay, um, so what if I did this? What if I said, okay, divide and round to the nearest hundredth? Thirty-seven point four divided by nine. Ready, go. Thirty-seven point four divided by nine. Round to the nearest hundredth. So this time, you you're not going to write it as a remainder. You're not going to write it as a fraction. You're going to write it as a decimal, but you're going to stop and round it as the nearest hundredth. So if you're rounding to the nearest hundredth, how many places do you have to divide to? You're going to have to answer out loud. Think about that when you're answering this question. Ready, go. Kind of You're blocking her. <laughs> so 37.4 divided by 9. Round your answer to the nearest 100. Okay. Yeah, try to do that in my head. Uh, <laughs> this should work. This should work. <laughs> work. Stop. Let's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you get? Um. We'll see. Let me. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, who wants to walk me through this? What do you do first? Divide it. So nine doesn't go into three. How many times does it go into 37? Four times with one left over, right? Bring down the four. How many times does nine go into? Yep, so remember, you can just bring the decimal up because you're not dividing by a decimal, so you just bring the decimal up. Goes in one time with five left over. What do I do with that? Yeah, you can add as many zeros as you want, right? And you need to because you have to round to the nearest hundredth. Okay, how many times does nine go into 50? Five times, multiply, and then you get another five. Okay, bring down a zero. So you have to go three places in order to round to two places. Remember, two places is the hundredth place, right? Two places after the decimal point is the hundredth places. So you have to go three places to be able to tell how to round to two places. So this is what you're rounding to, but you have to look at that next digit to see how to round it. Five means go up. So what's your answer? 4.1. Nice. Good job. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, the next, the last part of the test or the last part of the lesson is dividing. Um, we talked about vans transport 27 students. Van holds six students. So how many uh, vans do you need? Well, we you need four vans. And we had like 38 students. On yeah. Those are a little, this one, mine was more challenging. 
So how many do you need? Well, if you have four in a remainder, then you need five vans, right? Okay. All right, so um, any questions with writing your answers in a division problem with the remainder as a decimal or as a fraction? Do you guys feel like you can do all three of those? Okay, yes. Um, so for the, for the like, rounding, you go, if it's five or above, you give it a shot, and if it's four, you look. Yep, the number on the right of where you're asked to round to. So if um, that next number is five or above, then you, then you go up with that one. So that's why it's 4.16, because it's five or above. Give it a shove up, okay? Shove up. You shove up. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Okay, you guys good? Black.